I think I'm finally, finally free of the hose. Welcome back to another episode here at the Homestead. And this week we're going to be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. Uh, we're going to be talking about tools, but we're also going to be building something. moving from pneumatic nailers to battery operated nailers and not in terms of every little feature you find on these guys and how many nails they can shoot a second and reload time uh, quite honestly I don't care about that I just mean working and building and their functionality ergonomics and how are they to work with is it worth the cost to purchase this when you already have all of this but I don't want to stand here and just talk about tools. That's not really what my channel is all about. We like to build things and things that you could build too at home. So what we're going to be building today is a hedgehog cage. I have marching orders in hand with specific directions of what this hedgehog cage requires. So we're going to build one. consider is cost. So let's assume that you already own this. You've got a hose, you've got a pneumatic air nailer, so this is just a brad nailer, and you've got a compressor. Well, this is a pretty significant chunk of change to buy. You're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six hundred dollars depending on sale, whether it's a bare tool or it's a kit with a battery and charger, but regardless, a pretty expensive initial investment. Now, if you don't own this, things get a little more interesting. By the time you buy a pneumatic nailer, you're looking at $100 to $200 for a half decent one, a hose, say $50 to $75, a compressor, a couple hundred more dollars, you're now getting pretty even in price. ergonomics and what about using the tool in your hand well when we look at them straight side by side you can see one major difference off the bat the battery operated nailer is a whole lot bigger not only that it's a whole lot heavier I think this guy clocks in somewhere around six pounds whereas my Bostitch pneumatic maybe two if I had to guess so if it comes down to weight pneumatic wins every single time but ergonomics is not only just about weight, it's about the functionality of the tool when it's in your hand. Now, personally, I've never really had an issue with the ergonomics of pneumatic nailers. No matter which one I've used, they've always sort of performed flawlessly in my hand. You know, the weight of them is nice, they're easy to move around, and really my only downside to them comes in the form of that hose that is attached, limiting sometimes your reach or your positioning and being just kind of a pain. Moving on to battery operated nailers, I found the biggest hurdle to get over was the weight. But after a few projects, I wasn't even really thinking about it anymore. This may be specific to my Milwaukee nailers, but I found them balanced so well in my hand that it was just as though I was using a two pound pneumatic nailer, except I wasn't worrying about dragging that hose around. from ergonomics we have ease of use now there's something hard about using a pneumatic nailer it's grab your compressor set up your hose plug it in and go but all of that takes time and that time can be better used say just grabbing your battery nailer and getting to work the other aspect of pneumatic nailer that I find kind of the most annoying if you will is the limitation of that cord doesn't matter if that cord is 50 feet 100 feet 
uh, or 150 feet, you're always gonna feel like you are hitting its limit. Whether you're dragging it around corners, pulling it through rafters, it doesn't matter. It's a pain after a while. That is where the battery nailer truly shines. It's sort of grab it, plug a battery in, and go. The other place I find the battery nailer really shines is small projects. So whether you're trimming out a single window, installing a door, doing a small bit of framing, or building projects such as this, having a tool that you can just grab, slap a battery in, and start working is really nice. Again, it saves time, and it lets you get to work that much quicker. to the, the last point of discussion between pneumatic and battery operated nailers, and that is performance. Now keep in mind, I'm not comparing these specific nailers to each other, I'm comparing the category of pneumatics versus battery operated, and looking at them in general terms. So I've probably put tens of thousands of nails through this over the last 10 years, and it still functions like the day I bought it. Little maintenance, and I've probably had less jams than I can count on one hand. Now I've owned this nailer and Milwaukee's 15 gauge finish nailer for about six months now. And I've put somewhere between five and 10,000 nails combined into various materials, all the way from original studs in a hundred year old house that would have been made out of fur and they are hard, let me tell you, to plywood projects like this, to PVC trim on the garage. So to get back to the question at hand, if you already own all of this, is it worth buying into battery operated nailers? For me, the answer is an overwhelming yes. Just the lack of setup that I don't need to go through anymore with pneumatics, I can just grab a tool and go, is really, really not even important. It's just convenient, it's nice, it's simple. It makes building even more enjoyable. It hasn't made me any better at building, but because I find it more enjoyable, I'm more likely to get out and tackle small projects like this because I don't have the setup time, I don't have that thought process of having to lug everything out of the tool trailer. I can just grab a tool and go, and I love that. Take that with a grain of salt as you will, because only you can tell if it's worth your hard-earned money, but for me it was. I have my marching orders that I need to get back to. It's a pretty long list there of things I need to build or add to this DIY hedgehog cage. So I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna end this video here. Thanks a ton for watching guys. Hopefully you got a thing or two out of this and we'll see you next week. I might as well show you how the hedgehog hut turned out. Nice little second story there, grippy stairs or grippy ramp to get up. Now it's up to my daughter to help me finish it up and make everything from inside. See you guys next week.